Hello everybody and welcome to yet another Zebo mod tutorial. This tutorial is going to focus on the brand new flight director helper that Zebo has implemented. As some of you guys might know already that in some of the latest versions it's become more difficult to actually use the autopilot and get command A to engage because there is now certain real world elements that has now been introduced to the mod that uh, requires a little bit more skill, a little bit more practice and the aim of this video is to simplify all of that for you to show you uh, some settings that will be useful to show you how to operate it how to identify it and uh, use it to your benefit and i hope you are going to enjoy watching this video so before we just jump in and get going i just want to talk to you about a couple of settings that need to be set um, for most hardware, I'm talking ordinary hardware, not high-end, very expensive stuff for cockpit builders and, and things like that, um, the settings I'm about to show you will be true and um, I highly recommend that you follow my settings uh, to get uh, the autopilot connecting uh, easily and um, as shown here in this video. So, as this is a video about the Flight Director Helper, I reckon it just stands to reason that that would be the first setting that we go and find and switch on. After switching that on, we are free to look at the rest of the settings. To start with, we need to navigate to the Realism settings. And the very first setting that we need to change is the yoke movement. It needs to go to off. We, for obvious reasons, don't want the yoke to um, disconnect the autopilot because we are obviously struggling to get the autopilot connected in the first place. So that is highly counterproductive. We also don't want it to go to CWS just because we move the yoke and we're trying to chase the sweet spot to get the autopilot connected. The very next setting that we need to look at is the autopilot yoke and neutral tolerance setting uh, that we see there. It is very important to note that by definition it's going to be much easier to engage the autopilot when you use simply opposed to using real as your setting. The simply option is therefore ideal for novices or even the old hands who are struggling uh, to get the autopilot to connect because the margin of error, the tolerance that is built in there is 25%. So you, you've got a greater chance of connecting the autopilot when using simply. For the guys with experience or the guys who are looking for a challenge, um, obviously you can use the real setting. That will greatly reduce the tolerance uh, by 15% in fact, and it will give you a 10% tolerance or margin of error to actually get the sweet spot um, where you can enable your autopilot. The next setting is specifically for uh, users who use the Brunner hardware or self-centering yokes. Unless you own one of them, do not switch this setting on. Please make sure that it is off. The last two settings that I would like to show you guys is related to my autopilot and the way I've configured my SciTech yoke with button 8 and 9 respectively uh, selecting uh, in a toggle format the AP disconnect or command A. It just makes it so much easier while I'm flying not to have to uh, look up with the ad switch or with the mouse then find the button and then press the button. So I've uh, grown used to using it this way and I hope you guys find use in these settings as well. In order for the autopilot to connect during normal operations you need three uh, things to start with. Firstly the aircraft needs to be trimmed correctly. It also uh, needs to follow the flight director and your yoke needs to be in the neutral position. Any forces in acting on the yoke will cause a disconnect. 
Welcome to the Zebo cockpit guys. I am ready for takeoff. The aircraft is fully configured but before we get there I just want to mention a few things to you. Uh, the first thing is I am going to use LNAV VNAV uh, for the departure here. I'm going to enable and disable the autopilot quite a few times. I'm going to do simple maneuvers. I'm going to do more aggressive maneuvers and then return to switching on the autopilot because it's about the principle and showing you it's not about the altitude, it's about the attitude. We need to get the aircraft in a specific place uh, to get the autopilot to engage and I hope I'm going to demonstrate it uh, good enough for you that you will understand the principles that are at play um, in this new dispensation with the Zebo mod. The second thing I want to quickly discuss with you and mention and so on is just a little briefing and explanation of what's about to happen just so you guys have an idea when we get there and for that I'm going to zoom in on our primary flight display and I want you to pay attention to that little square that has all of a sudden become very important in our lives I'm not sure how many of you have ever had to worry about it before but trust me at this point in time it's going to be very important the center of that little square is the neutral point that is referred to when we talk about the tolerance that is allowed for the real versus the simply settings in the uh, Zebo tablet that we chose and set earlier in this video. To understand it further you also now need to understand that the next point of interest is the very intersection point of your balanced crosshair of your flight director. This is important because the tolerance that is referred to is the distance between these two points. So in layman's terms, the 10% tolerance is a shorter line, shorter distance, and the simply tolerance is a longer line and a longer distance that is allowed between these two points where the um, autopilot will be allowed to engage. Well guys, that uh, brings us to the actual flight and we are about to take off. Everything seems to be fine. We are expecting a, a huge crosswind, so it might be a bumpy start. We're going to try and just counter it best we can, get up uh, and uh, then balance off from there. Uh, from where I will then uh, multiple times just uh, connect and disconnect the um, autopilot and show you guys all the stuff that uh, we've been talking about in action on runway one seven on runway one seven Gear up. All right. Four hundred. I'm just going to quickly settle the gears here. All right. So. One thousand. I've just made sure that the aircraft is nicely trimmed, and then I'm going to zoom in and show you what we are talking about. Alright, so 
currently you can see that the vertical bar is flashing so it means that we are out of our 10 percent tolerance there it stopped because we've obviously turned into it it's within the 10 percent tolerance and we can now activate our command a uh, the same happened with uh, the uh, horizontal bar um, it obviously was within the 10 percent tolerance so no problem there in actually uh, enabling our autopilot right we're just waiting for flaps up and i'm going to disconnect the autopilot and we can start playing a little bit Right, the autopilot is disconnected, as far as I know the engage bar is back in place so we can only engage when we are ready. Alright, so at this point in time you see both of them are complaining because we are completely out of the tolerance area, there's just no ways. As I'm lifting my nose you can see the horizontal bar is more happy, it stopped complaining but the vertical bar needs to come back in an area where it is happy so there we go and again we can just switch on command a and the autopilot is now in control again right we can go to standard and play some more so basically if you consider these lines to be follow me lines i think that's the easiest way of um, explaining it if um, uh, they start to flash you need to fly towards them so whether that be up and down or left and right that's irrelevant you need to fly towards the one that is busy flashing and we're going to test that theory just now again so we disconnect lift the bar and what we're going to do is turn right so now the one that's flashing says we need to turn left so we're going to turn left towards it until we get to a place where it stops and then we're going to lift our nose a little bit to get that indication all right so now we need to let our nose come down again and as long as we are within the tolerance of what is allowed according to our setting the autopilot will re-engage and that is how easy it is in essence I think um, the theory is more important that you understand the theory. Once you get the theory in your head, it's easy enough to implement it. And you can see it's very easy with the visual cues right now. Nothing much to it, guys. Um, and I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with it. I'll do one or two more just to make sure that um, we get the principle. And uh, that'll be the end of the stream, my friends. Guys, I've just thought of one more thing before uh, we end this tutorial. Um, and it's important to understand that it's not about altitude, it's about attitude. Um, there was a bit of a misconception. I think the guys on Facebook uh, grasped what we explained earlier. Um, but in case you are wondering, it does not matter how you take off. I personally use LNAV VNAV and in exceptional instances I will use level change or I will in fact even fly this aircraft by hand up to 5,000 feet or whatever those things are not relevant to the issue what is relevant is the tolerance and that you get your um, uh, cross air right in the middle of that box or as close to as possible as what your tolerance setting allows the moment those uh, vertical and horizontal lines stop flashing uh, you know you're on the right track and when both of them are not flashing obviously you are with intolerance and all you need to do is press your autopilot button uh, to engage your autopilot guys i hope um, you have learned something i hope it makes more sense than before um, if not let me know we can talk through something uh, related to this issue uh, to get you up to speed as well but i think it's relatively straightforward i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and we will speak again soon bye bye